Hey guys, so I got a question about what happens if Alpha Investment decides to sell his collection into the marketplace. So now we all know he has a massive collection of sealed and reserved list cards. And if he dumps it into the market, first of all, I don't think he would ever dump it into the marketplace. It's kind of like if you find a new diamond mine. So diamonds are actually not rare at all. Um, they just ha there's a company with the monopoly of it. So whenever there's another diamond mine, they go ahead and they seal off that mine. They collect all their diamonds and they put it in a vault. The last thing that any diamond uh, owner, any of them would want to do is tank the market because they're already receiving huge margins, huge profits. They've already made money. Rudy's already made plenty of money from buying a sealed box for $100 and now it suddenly is $10,000, $20,000. You know, maybe, maybe he's got boxes of alpha, beta, unlimited, who knows what he has. He has definitely has boxes of revised that he got for relatively cheap because he bought them older. The last thing you would wanna do with a diamond is to flood the market with a bunch of diamonds. Maybe you slow drip it, maybe you do a lot of private sales, but you're not going to flood the market. So therefore, I'm not too concerned about the price dipping because the person most affected by the price dipping would be the person selling, or a la Rudy. So I think that's not a concern at all. Um, I do see in the future he does have enough magic cards that he, if he sold them and he has the contacts and he has the ability to sell them, yes, he could probably retire off what he has currently. He doesn't need to accumulate more. And it does seem like he is not accumulating more. So if you remember the old Rudy videos, and this is something to learn because do what he's, you know, do what he does and not what he says sometimes. He did a max box, um, ton, tons and tons of box openings of Battle for Zendikar. In the Battle for Zendikar, I think the rationale, he would have these videos, he would show you all the foil, the foil mythics, he would show you all the expeditions. He doesn't do that anymore. He doesn't do mass box openings and very few people do. And because the profit is simply not there with the collector's edition. So there was a shift from him opening his own standard cards and him selling singles on eBay and keeping the expeditions or the valuable cards he wanted to keep, which is, was not a bad strategy at the time to what it is today where he is opening Patreon's boxes. So you rarely see him open his own box, right? It's always for this Patreon, that Patreon, this Patreon, that because they then the patron would take the risk. So you went from somebody opening hundreds if not thousands of boxes of Battle for Zendikar to someone who doesn't open a single box of Kaldenheim. Maybe in private, I, I don't know, um, but that has been a very big shift, right? Because if he was still doing the mass box openings and selling the single and there was still profit there, we would expect that to continue. Now it's very laborious, uh, but again, you can hire a minimal wage employee to help you out. So you do, you are seeing a shift away. So I, I don't want to say that people are incorrect. There, there does seem to be a shift and I've heard rumors that he may be leaving YouTube in three to five years that he himself has said that. Um, I'm just not worried about his inventory at all because if anyone is incentivized to keep prices high on sealed boxes and to you know hype out prices, it would be Rudy. It's almost like a diamond seller, right? Um, why would a diamond seller tank their own prices? No, they're just gonna keep these extra diamonds in a vault to then sell on for engagement rings and necklaces and things of that nature. Now, I, I will say that the standard drip is very interesting. So, I mean, reserve list, if the box has is unsealed, if it's a box of Mirage, I don't think anyone has any problem holding that box of Marauds. I mean, it's pretty crazy. I mean, it would be crazy to to think that was not. Again, if it's real, you got it from a legitimate source, you're not worried about it being fake and counterfeit, you can hold that until the end of days and that will continue to go up, up, up in price. Now, if it's like a reserve list card, I know that people are a little concerned. Prices are down for magic cards, reserve list in general. And prices are down in Pokemon. Prices are down in sports cards. Prices are down. I think it is the idea that the pandemic is almost over. Everyone who wants to be vaccinated will soon be get their second dosage. 
I'm going to get my second dosage around probably April. And then after I get my second dose, and everyone I know will have their second dosage around April. And then once we have our second dosage, I mean, I think things will more or less return back to normal. People will you know, fly, people will take vacations, people have been storing up money to take vacations, and then that money is going to move from the collectibles. One of the reasons I believe collectibles, including Magic the Gathering, were so hot was because, hey, what else are you going to spend your money on? I mean, you can't vacation, right? Everything, all the travel agents, everything is shut down. So to make a long story short, this, you know, if you're worried that he's going to dump inventory for 50% off, ooh, you don't know, uh, you, you don't know it very well. There is no reason for him to dump inventory at 50% off when he can charge 150% to Patreons. Like he, the, he can charge a premium because it comes from him. And a premium is very reasonable. It comes from a reliable source. He's got good feedback. He has a reputation. And this is something where you know that it's almost like hiring a professional to check if your box is real. So he, he will probably do all that stuff for you. Verification of a box from Rudy is probably much more likely to be real than a box from a random seller and TCG player. So there is a premium. So it's not just like, oh, a brand name. It, there is a premium to it because you're buying from, that's why Card Kingdom can charge so much compared to a TCG player seller because Card Kingdom has a better name. It has better rec name recognition, SEO, it has a search engine. It's running Google ads. It's spending money on its marketing so it can sell. So it needs be better margins. And that, that's a different business model. So I, I don't expect Rudy to fire sell anything ever. Um, I, I don't, especially I don't expect them to five star reserve list cards. Now, reserve list cards are going down because it's, you know, like I said, people are going back to normal. Um, I, I used to see these, uh, tramp trailers or no, they're not trailers. They're like RVs, like, and people would take RV trips, like in my neighborhood and so on. And now I see the RVs again because they're moving and they're vacationing and, they're having, I mean, it is what it is. For the most part, the pandemic in most people's minds, after you get your second vaccine, what else is there that you can do? Yes, you can wear a mask, even if you have your second vaccine, but I mean, how much safer can you? So all the anime conventions are opening up. They are, some of them have stacked weekends and everything is open now, uh, especially in Texas. So there's not really a major concern, in my opinion, uh, especially if I got my second vaccine and my mindset is, okay, I did everything I needed to do. I waited over a year. I'm just going to kind of return back to normal life. You know, we'll be, I will go back out and eat at restaurants. I'll hang out with my friends again. I'll go to Dave and Buster's. Even though the Dave and Buster's I normally go to, there was a, uh, a gunshot, like somebody, uh, a father got killed in front of his like six year old daughter recently. If that's the six, I was like, oh, okay. Oh. You know, if I had my second dosage a little earlier, um, maybe I would be part of a victim or a hero, I guess, in that circumstance. Because I go to Dave and Buster's every Wednesday, and they go, they went, that was a Wednesday. I was like, oh, huh, interesting. Bye, guys.